are who we are by nature because of sin. Sin placed mankind in a dilemma. We are all sinners and the wages of sin is death. So we cannot save ourselves. Does that sound hopeless? There is good news. What is the good news? The apostle Paul says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6, 23. So while we look at the dismal picture of the devastating effect and consequences of sin on humanity throughout history to this present generation with all the sufferings and all the chaos, with all the pandemic and all the catastrophes, the accidents through all the wars and all the volcanic eruptions and earthquakes, so tornadoes and tsunamis and all of the different hurricanes and the things that are taking human life by the thousands and the millions. And there are people who are dying without hope of eternal life. There are people who have no idea where they're going to spend eternity. But tonight, I want to assure you from the word of God that God has made a way out. He has provided a gift to humanity. That gift is through his son, Jesus Christ. No other religious leader in all of the denominations and the religious circles within the religious circles that have existed in the past, whether it be pagan or non-pagan, whether it be through Buddhism, Islam, or any other mega source of human conditioning, religious conditioning, there is only one solution that has made it crystal clear to humanity that eternal life can be experienced that human beings can live forever and only one religious leader was able to make that statement and that person is Jesus Christ. And the reason why Jesus Christ made that statement because he proved it. You name me one religious leader, whether it be the leader of Islam or Buddhism or the leader of any other, organiz uh, other religious organization that have raised the dead. You name me one that have raised the dead. Not one from time immemorial till now. If you go back ancient times, back to the time of the Egyptians, they could not raise the dead. That's why they build the elaborate tombs, the pyramids to bury the, 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 the leaders, the kings, the pharaohs, because they could not raise them from the dead. From the time of Nebuchadnezzar, he could not raise the dead. The people around him, they could not raise the dead. Alexander the Great could not raise himself from the dead, neither his counselors. The time of the Romans, all the Caesars, Julius Caesar, Octavian, and all the Tiberius, they could not raise themselves, nor others, from the dead. During the time of the Middle Ages, all the great leaders from the time, the European uh, colonization of the, of the West, none of them, my friends, have succeeded in raising the dead, nor raised themselves. Only one, one person succeeded in doing that. And that is Jesus Christ. Before he died, he raised a young man from the dead in the city, in a little town called Nain. Then he raised a centurion servant back to life. Then he raised Lazarus, who had died four days. He raised him from the dead. And then most important of all, he raised himself from the dead. That's a person you can trust. That's a person you can believe in when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When he says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, the apostle Paul says that, you can trust the, this statement. You can believe it. As someone says, you could take it to the bank. Yes, sir, indeed. And so now we have the good news. Eternal life is a free gift. It is something that we, can, we, we cannot earn it. We don't deserve it because we have, we, we have done, we have messed up. We have all committed sin. So God, through his love for us, 
through his mercy and his grace, he has given us this free gift. My dear friends, stop trying to earn salvation on your own. You will not succeed in doing that. It is not gained through penance. In other words, you cannot afflict yourself in order to gain salvation. You cannot pay your way to eternal life. You cannot put a price tag on it to say, well, I have, uh, I'm a millionaire or a billionaire, therefore I could buy or purchase salvation. No, no matter how you may perform the task of charity, goodwill, you cannot earn it. It is not through self-adulation or, 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 or punish self, punishing yourself to honor to, to obtain pain. No, you cannot earn salvation. Salvation is a free gift. And that's such a good news just to know that it is free. That we don't have to pay for salvation. But yet still, in spite of the fact that salvation is free, there are some people who refuse to ask for it. Why? Why do people find it so difficult to accept a free gift such as sal salvation? But let's continue, consider, consider this for a little bit. Salvation is not gained by burning incense or offering long prayers, litanies. It is not gained by repeating the Hail Mary. No. It cannot be achieved through ceremonies, indulgences, the mass. It cannot be achieved through processionals, victuals, and rituals, or libations, merits, or self-mortification. Cannot earn salvation through such means. Christ's death on the cross is the only means, my friends, for salvation. The only means for salvation. His death on the cross. When he died, he paid the price for us all. For whosoever believeth in him, the Bible says, should not perish but have everlasting life. That whosoever includes anyone, you and me, all who are listening. The message of salvation is not a glamorous message. It is not a message that is coming from Hollywood. It is not a message that is coming from Main Street or from Broadway. It is not a message that you will find all the popular stars, the celebrities, and all those who are considered as the rich and the famous embrace, they do not. The message of salvation is not one that the political leaders advocate. Smart people who claim to be intelligent, they rather trust in their own merits, their own ability, rather than trusting the words of Jesus. What Christ did almost 2,000 years ago was the remedy and the price he paid for sin. He made a way where there was no way. He brought hope where there was no hope for humanity. He take away the dark cloud of despair, of fear. He took away, my friends, all of the uncertainties of life. And he gives the blessed assurance. He gives us the means for, our, for us to live forever. He offered his own life as a free gift. You see, because the wages of sin is death, so somebody had to pay the price. So his death covered, covered us paid the price for us. He met the demands that was claimed. He paid it with his own life. So you and I can live forever. We don't have to suffer the eternal death. 
So if you and I die today and we have this assurance, we shall live forever. Your loved ones, if they have this assurance, they will live forever. Are you afraid of death? Are you afraid of dying? The child of God who believes in the word of God will never be afraid of death. Listen to what the prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? Neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. When we are talking about the promises of God, it is rooted in who God is, his very nature. So therefore, my dear friends, we need to stop putting our trust in human power, in human ability, in human wisdom, in all the the, 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 the things that humanity have created cannot procure nor save him from eternal death, but only through the means and the provision that God himself have made. Here's what Isaiah continued to say in verse 31 of Isaiah chapter 40. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. These words are so soothing. They are so reassuring to know that you and I can put our trust in God and follow his precepts. Be obedient to his word so that we could have the assurance of eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. Are you afraid? If you're afraid tonight, here's what the prophet says. Verse 10, chapter 41. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. These are the words of Jesus. The words of assurance. The words of peace. The words of comfort. The words of hope. The words of eternal life. And most important of all, Jesus himself says, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. That's why he gave his life on the cross. That's why he bled and died and suffered that you and I could live forever. Yes, you can live forever. Yes, you can have eternal life. So you don't have to worry about cancer. You don't have to worry about the pandemic. You don't have to worry about anything else in this life. That we, here's the secret. If you can trust God for his glorious promise of eternal life, then we can go through the stresses of life without worry or fear. Because worry and fear can depress and compromise our ability to fight against diseases. But if you have the hope of eternal life in you, when you are faced with the pandemic, you are faced with a diagnosis from the doctor, you will have such peace within, such assurance of eternal life that that, that faith that you have in God will help you to overcome and to fight all of the challenges of life, including life-threatening conditions. That's why Jesus was able to say, he that have the son have life. When you have the son of God, you have the means to live forever. And so whatever happens to our body is inconsequential because Jesus Christ has already overcome the most, the most severe of human problems, and that is death. So we don't have to be afraid of death anymore, my friends. You don't have to be afraid of worries, of, of, of sickness and disease. Do not worry. Let God handle these things for you. You just walk in obedience to his word. Trust him and you will have peace of mind. May God bless you. As I share this message with you, you can live 
forever in Jesus Christ. I just want to Lord let you know that I, I truly, I truly appreciate it. Given all what's going on in this world, Dr. Payne has just reported the millions of people that have passed just to this COVID-19 alone. Mm -hmm. Not just the COVID-19, but annually the amount of people, even in just this United, these United States, the hundreds of thousands of people that died from various illnesses. And to hear what you have just present in such a presented to us, uh, I tell you what, it is it brings joy uh, to my soul and encouragement, even in my bones. So I want I want to thank you for present the word of God in such a clear um, manner. And so I want to say thank you for that. And that's what we need in such times. That's what we need in such times. We need to give people hope. We need to give people hope. And um, I see this as the vaccine or the inoculation for a hopeless generation. And when we could help people to have that inner peace of God, to know that Jesus Christ is your savior and he has paid the price for you. Man, this will give your immune system such a boost that it will marvel and astonish doctors and physicians to know that. And they would ask you the question. They would say, but how, how come you were so calm and how come you were so, you know, you, 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 you're looking so pleasant in the midst of the diagnosis? The secret is because you found Jesus. The secret is because you have a relationship with him. And it's not an ordinary relationship. It's a saving relationship. That's the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Indeed. You know, last night we had a privilege to have a physician on the show, Dr. Johnson. It's a Christian physician. And he was talking, and in the midst of his presentation, he stressed the very point that you just made. Because he was speaking uh, about, in fact, there, he was given an analogy uh, of a research that they were research and did a, a research on someone who was sick and they place him in a happy environment. And mm -hmm. by being in a happy environment, when the doctor did a, a test on him, his blood pressure became normal, his, 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 his heart rate, just name it, every single thing pretty much became, um, became normal over a period of time. Amen. And, and that speak, um, it as if the Holy Spirit have been working simultaneously with you and with him to coordinate this very this very point so I, I really want to thank you for that yes praise be to God there, there's a few texts I, I want to share with you um, some of the very texts that you you shared us I want to, I want to put them back uh, with you in a question area in a question if I may and perhaps there are others in the audience that want to engage in a dialogue as well but but I want to turn your, your attention to um, Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2 the very text that you shared with us. I'm going to read it and I'm going to ask a question. It says, but your iniquity have separated, I'm reading from a King James Version, so, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. What is the text really saying about our sin separate us from God and hid his face from us? Unpack that for us, please, if you may. Well, the Bible declares that we all have sin and come short of the glory of God. And so the condition of sin had, has placed us at odds with God because God is righteous, he's holy, and we are not because of our sinful condition. So if we stay or choose to stay in our sinful condition rather than repent and turn into God, then our iniquity will keep us at odds. And it means, therefore, that it is it's going to create, it has created such a separation. The problem is to acknowledge that we are sinful and then to have a desire to turn to God. Now, if we 
as human beings, sinful human beings, choose not to turn to God and rather stay in our iniquity, then God is telling us not that he don't want to help us, but because the iniquity have separated us from him. And that's why God is unable to do the things that he really wants to do for us, which primarily to save us. I appreciate it. I also want to, while I'm in Isaiah, I also want to want to stay with Isaiah 41, uh, verses 28, and also I want to touch at verse, verse 31 as well. But let me read at 30, Isaiah 41 and 28. He said, As though not known, as though not here, that the everlasting God, yes. the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding what is the bible saying in light of what you're sharing i may just read the 31 as well while we're there so this way you could just unpack them both uh, um, simultaneously and in verse 31 he said but but they that wait upon the lord shall renew in their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagle they shall run and never we never be weary and they shall walk and not faint you know um the prophet isaiah is known as the gospel prophet of the old testament it is truly messianic because there are lots of prophetic statements that was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. The messianic prophecies that were given by the prophet Isaiah prefigured what um, the promises of God made in the Old Testament to be fulfilled and was fulfilled indeed in the New Testament. So now God is reassuring us through his word and in many other passages as the one you've just quoted that he's telling us that he is not man that he should not keep his promise nor his word there's no fainting no shadow of turning no variableness in god god is constant he's consistent in what he does and what he says so if we take god at his word you don't have to worry you could rest assured that he will do what he says he will do including healing our bodies and he has proven it he has done it before, and because he has done it before, he can do it again. Like the songwriter says, he will do it again. Just take a look at yourself. Where we are now, where we used to be, God has taken us from a mighty long way, you know. And he has not, and he's not finished. He has not, he's not done yet. There will be bumps in the road. There will be ups and downs. There will be twists and turns. There will be rivers to cross, oceans to navigate, mountains to climb. But God is there with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And Isaiah as well as Jeremiah promised, God says that the, the, the thoughts he has towards us are good, not of evil to do us harm, but to give us the desired end that we've been praying and asking for. And this is why um, I, I, I believe strongly that the power that is in the word of God comes to life when we believe in it, when we exercise our faith in him. The, the power that is invested in the word comes to life. Um, let us look at chapter 44 in Isaiah, verse 3. Isaiah 44, verse 3 out says, chapter 44, verse 3, God says, I will pour water upon, your, upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. These are glorious promises of God. And in case you doubt that really God really doesn't care about you, Listen to what he says. You read up there in verse 2, the same chapter, chapter 44. Thus saith the Lord that made heaven and earth, that formed, that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. And he says, 
Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeron, whom I have chosen. You are special in the sight of God, even from your mother's womb. God knew you and I even before we were born. God knew ahead of time what we were going to face. He knew the pandemic was coming. He knew what the medical diagnosis was going, was going to be. Nothing takes God by surprise. And that's why we are to trust him. And in verse 23, um, there is another promise in verse 23, verse 24. Verse 23 and verse 24 of Isaiah chapter 44 says, Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing. Ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein, for the Lord redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. And verse 24 says, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things and stretcheth forth the heavens alone that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Praise God. What a God. What a powerful God. If God could do that, he could stretch the heavens by his word, man. He put everything into operation. Don't you think that he has the same power to take care of your body? Don't you think that he has the same power to take care of all our needs, our situation, our health condition? Of course he does. Yes, he does. So let us trust him. Praise let God. us trust him. Let's put our faith and our confidence in God. And as you mentioned about a medical doctor yesterday, who talk about human beings who have been, who were sick, but yet still they were surrounded with love, words of kindness, caring. Um, they were able to recuperate and to do much better because of that. And that's what God does with us when we maintain that saving relationship with him. He, he transformed us from within. He revitalized and re, rejuvenate our immune responses to the illnesses because when you are in Christ, you will not go through depression. You will not go through sadness and sorrow because the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I, I, I enjoy it, Pastor. But I'm going to pause for a moment. Perhaps someone have a question or a statement in the audience because this is a dialogue. I don't want to be selfish here. I want to give someone else an opportunity to probably make, uh, ask a question or, or make a statement. Anyone in the audience at this time? Remember, this is a dialogue. Where are you in your journey with God? And what does past what does pastor Lawrenson said that will encourage you if you're just if you're going through a tough time if you're discouraged maybe you have a family member that you want to see come to know jesus christ as lord and savior i want to let you know that this is a great platform you can tune into this show from the comfort of your living room even from the comfort of your bedroom you could come you could tune in instead of looking at cnn and looking at auto uh, sport channel use this opportunity to, to turn to FSM Daily Digital Show where we'll give you a word that will encourage you in the Lord. If you notice, after watching CNN and Fox News and listen to what's going on there, at the end of the day, it depresses you. It depresses oh, yes. us. Yes, yes, and so yes. here what the word that Pastor Lawrence just showed us, that God can do and want to do great things for you and your family. Invite them to be a part of the show. And, 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 and as I said before, is there a statement? Is there a question from anyone at this point? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I, just, I just wanted to uh, say a word of encouragement that although um, the Bible says that knowledge will increase and we have uh, medicine to take care of most of our ailments the body there is something to prescribe for every ailment i just want to let everyone know that uh, where we get these resources from is god and at the end of the day even though the doctor can write a prescription for depression 
anxiety and any other ailments we have when we are finished taking these prescribed medications we should come to god because that's where we find comfort and where we find true healing thank you and bless you wonderful well said appreciate that thought anyone else any statement any comment hi doctor um if i heard you correctly before did you say that jesus died and raised himself from the dead and if so how did he raise himself when he was already dead <laughs> that's a very good question my sister jesus himself says i lay my life down and i take it again he says i am the resurrection and the life he made those statements emphatically you see the divinity of jesus christ was demonstrated when he raised all the people to life. If you are not God, you cannot raise people to life from death. You can't do it. But what he demonstrated was he showed us the relationship between himself and the Father. Okay? And that every time he called upon his Father to show us that we should call upon the Father. But then Christ says, for the Son of Man in, has come into this world and the devil, the enemy, has nothing on him. He said that. The devil has nothing on him. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. And many instances when he healed people, um, he accepted worship. Now, if he was not God, that would have been blasphemous for people to come and bow down and worship Jesus and for him to accept that. Only God should accept worship. Only God should accept worship. That's number one. Number two, only God has the power to forgive sin. Jesus accepted worship. Number two, Jesus forgives sins. Number three, only God could bring the dead back to life. And Jesus did it. So on those three points, he accepted worship, he forgives sins, and then he raised the dead, proved that he had power to bring himself back to life. So that, again, is another reason to open our eyes to show us that God is real. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank Hallelujah. you. And another point I want to share on top of that is angels, angels uh, proclaimed and worshipped Jesus. Angels showed respect to Jesus and they worshipped him as well. Angels. And... Um, Demons also did that too. Demons worshipped and they acknowledged Jesus and his divinity. Angels, those holy angels, acknowledged Jesus' his divinity. And demons also acknowledge Jesus' divinity. And when we talk about divinity, we are talking about God being manifested in the flesh. God being manifested in the flesh. I appreciate and, um, it. When, when the angel announced to Mary about the birth of Jesus, he says, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Only God could save people from their sins. Jesus is the son of God, God in the flesh. Jesus Christ is God in the, in the flesh, human flesh. Appreciate it, Pastor. And if I make, may just direct the attention also that um, person that stated that question to the book of John. John chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. And quickly, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. It was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2, The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life and that the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And so, and skip on to verse 14. In verse 14, it says, And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. 
and we beheld the, his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and uh, truth. So simple put, what the Bible is saying to us here that the, Jesus is God, and the reason why he could, he could, he could, he could re, re, lay his life down and picked up his life back, because we need to see Jesus from this, this perspective. The, when he take on humanity, he laid on divinity. So when he defeats Satan, he could fight Satan in your strength and my strength. Again, he could fight Satan in your strength and in my strength. So as such, he laid on his divine power, picked up your power, your human weakness and my human weakness, and defeats Satan. In, a while, in, a, in the strength that we have. And he does it by reading the scripture for strength. The same way he wants us to read the scripture so we can get strength. He does it by praying to the God within him. I, I'm going to repeat it again. He does it by praying to the God within him for strength. Just the way we have to pray to Jesus for strength. Jesus took on our flesh. Read scripture for strength and encouragement. And when he prayed, he had to pray from a human perspective to the divine God within him. And the God within him gave him strength to overcome Satan. The same way you and I have to pray to Jesus for strength. Likewise, he prayed for Jesus. So he is fully man. And because he's fully God and fully man, when he laid on his life, he could be able to raise himself up because he's also fully God and fully man. Not even eternity will give us sufficient time to unpack how God became man. And that's the reason why uh, um, affirming what Pastor Larson just said, that Jesus Christ is worthy of your praise and he's worthy of my praise because he's God. Pastor, I, I, wanna, I wanna go to uh, uh, one or two of questions before the show over. I, I just really want to ask you this question in respect to John. John, my favorite author, John chapter 11. You share with us John chapter 11, Pastor, verses 25 and 26. John chapter 11. And this is, this is some powerful word that you share with us here. In John chapter 11, quickly, verses um, 25 and 26, he said, and Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe in me, though he was dead, yet shall he live. Unpack that for us, please. You know, um, eternal life begins the moment a person believes in Jesus Christ. Because the promise becomes effective, or should I say effectual, at the very instant that that person lay hold on the promise of Jesus Christ. The, uh, the death of Lazarus was indeed a bitter experience for his sisters, Mary and Martha. And remember what they said to Jesus, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. So Christ says, don't worry. Your brother sleepeth. So they said to him, well, if he sleepeth, well, he's doing good. You know, don't wake him up. But then Christ realized that they misunderstood these statements. So Christ says, well, he's dead, but I will go to wake him up. In other words, a person who died in the Lord, that death is not eternal death. That death is but a sleep for the child of God. And so when, because the child of God will, will be raised from mortal to immortality. Now, Lazarus died again after Christ rose him from the dead. He died again. But that death is not eternal death. That death is temporal death. When the Bible says for the wages of sin is death, it's twofold. The death is twofold, temporal and eternal. But when we are in Christ, we only suffer the temporal death, not the eternal death. 
So therefore, that temporal death is but a sleep to the child of God. That's why Paul says in Thessalonians that when a loved one dies, we should not cry and moan as those with no hope. Because the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout or the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And in verse chapter 15, he says, uh, this in Thessalonians, first Thessalonians, first um, Corinthians 15, he says, for this mortal shall put on immortality. And it shall be said in the saying will be said, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? For the sting of death, for the sting of sin is death, because Christ died for us. He took away the sting of death. So therefore, the child of God does not die the eternal death, but only the temporal death. So that's why the death of Jesus Christ was temporal, just for three days. Our death will be temporal. The child of God who believes in Jesus, their death will be temporal. But those who do not believe in Jesus Christ, when they die, they have no hope of eternal life. They will die the eternal death. That is very uh, um, clear in all scripture. This is why the gospel is an invitation to have eternal life. So once you have Jesus Christ, the promise of eternal life begins with you. It begins the moment you believe in Christ Jesus. Even though you die, but that death is only temporal. But Christ will bring you back to eternal life. How do we know he will do that? Because he brought himself back from the grave because he raised himself from death because he says I am the resurrection and the life I am the resurrection and the life nobody in all of human existence ever made such a statement Jesus Christ alone Buddha couldn't make such a statement Mahatma couldn't make such a statement. Muhammad could not make such a statement. But Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he made it and he proved it. Praise God. So, Pastor, if I may, if I may follow up here, given what Dr. Payne has shared with us in respect to the amount of people that died from coronavirus, both in these United States and across the globe, are you saying now, those people that died in Christ, are you saying that is temp once they know Christ is temporal, uh, yeah. it is just asleep? Yeah, all the death, all the death that are going up for those who are in, in Christ is just temporal. All the deaths that are going on right now is temporal. God will bring his people back to life. Uh, and, and quickly, just like, the, the, brought, the, the, just like he brought Lazarus, Lazarus was a, a, an example to demonstrate what Christ would do in the last days, in the latter time, when he comes back the second time. So, I, I, and I want to move for the last question now, verse 26. And 26 said, uh, John, and for those who just joined us, John chapter 11, we have the passage dealt with 20, verse 25. Now, my final question to him now is on verse 26. And verse 26, I'm going to read it in the hearing. And he said, And whosoever liveth, and believe in me shall never die. And then he further go on and says, believe thus this. They will never die the eternal death. Not the temporal death, but the eternal death. They will never die the eternal death. In fact, the temporal death is not really a death. As far as the scriptures explain, it's a sleep. Now, we know the person died because the body decays and everything, decomposes and everything, you know? Yes, but because of the surety of the glorious resurrection at the second coming of Jesus Christ, it makes the death look like a sleep. Because when the, res when the righteous is raised from the dead, they would have no clue that they had been sleeping for millennia or centuries because it will be like a blink of the eye. 
You know, the power of God is so uh, reassuring to the believer that when our loved ones are taken away from us, for example, if I may just say this, um, my parents have passed away, both my dad and my mom, but thank God before they close their eyes in death, they both surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ. And both of them assured me, I was the one who the Lord used to lead them into the, into the, to accept Jesus Christ as their, all right. So the, the final point that I want to make mm. on this, and you alluded to it, you quoted it earlier. Let me quote it again in chapter 11 of John, the gospel of John chapter 11 and verses 25 and 26. Now, here's how Jesus responded to Martha, who was heartbroken when his brother Lazarus died. And Jesus says unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. Now, that's that's the turning point for the believer to embrace and that when a person dies in the in Jesus Christ died with a relationship with Christ Jesus is giving the guarantee that that person will live again so beginning at the presentation I had the title you can live forever you can live forever. And verse 26 says, And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this. That's a challenge to ignite our faith in Jesus Christ and his word. The power of faith is transformative. It transforms the believer. The power of the word of God creates faith in us. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the words Jesus says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So when we live by the word of God, we are alive. We are alive. Spiritually, we are alive. Those who do not practice nor believe the word of God, they are dead spiritually. So when Christ says you shall live, in other words, eternal life begins in you because you have the living word of God resonated in you and you are living by that word. So the promises of God keeps us alive spiritually. So the child of God who dies the temporal death shall live again. That's what Christ is emphatically stating in John 11, 25 and 26. Indeed, Pastor, I, I truly, I truly, I must be honest with you. It's been a long day for me and I needed to hear a word from God to encourage me in the Lord. And uh, I truly appreciate, you know, John is my favorite, one of my favorite author in the Bible. John Paul is my, is my role model evangelist. But John has a way of writing that cut to the core of the issue. It cut to the point and link us to what is, what is important or who is important that Jesus Christ is who we say he is. He is the creator of this world. He is the one who sustains and maintains life. But he's more than just the creator and the one who sustains and maintains. He is redeemer. He redeemed us when we fell into sin. And as pastors assured us that he's coming back again to remove us from this sin, sick world where we will live with him in a perfect world with our perfect God, with a perfect body, when all these things will be no more and we will live in the beauty of holiness in the presence of our God. And if you want to read more about this, just go to the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 through 7 and you will get a glimpse 
just a glimpse of what God has in store for us who love him. But until then, we just want to thank you for joining us. But Pastor, just before you go, I'm going to ask that you pray for us. Uh, there are several prayer requests uh, among us. Uh, we are still praying for Dr. Payne. Uh, we're praying for his daughter. We're praying for Pastor Sousa's daughter. We're praying for my neighbor, Sister Sarah, and her son, uh, Dylan. And also, probably there are other prayers among us, uh, prayer requests among us. And also, may I just add to the list, there are many among us who have suffered the loss of their loved one, that temporary sleep if you may and you know Jesus wept when he was among us so if he been God wept what says us who though will miss those who will love so if you could also pray a prayer of comfort for those who have lost a loved one and and finally for those who have a burning desire to see their, their family members come to know Jesus Christ as God I pray that uh, you, you may give those family members um, word from an eye that they will say the right thing to even encourage them to come on this show so we could help to lead them to the foot of the cross. And with that being said, is there anyone else that has a prayer request that would like to add to it? Yes, good evening. I have a husband and wife who's contracted the COVID and I want us to continue to pray for our teachers nurses, doctors, and first responders, and police officers. Thank you. I've had many fears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. Through it all, through it all, oh, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Well, I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. Oh, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Now, I thank God for the mountains. And I thank him for the valleys. I thank him for the storms he brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I'd never know that he could solve them. No, I'd never know what faith in God could do. Through it all, through it all, oh, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Yes, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, oh, I've learned to depend upon his word through it all through it all oh i've learned to trust in jesus yes i've learned to trust in god through it all through it all, oh, I've learned to depend upon his word. Oh, I've learned to depend upon his word. Oh, 
God our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be thou our helper in time of need, in time of distress, in time of physical ailments, in time of sickness, disease, in times of the death. You are our comforter. You are the one who could wipe away our tears. You are the ones who could bring about empathy, turn the heart of sorrow into the heart of gladness. You can bring joy and comfort and peace, tranquility to our troubled heart. We thank you for your blessed assurance. We thank you for the comfort that we can draw from your word. We pray that everyone who listened that faith may be reignited in their hearts, rekindled in their soul, that they will be drawn closer to you and have a clearer understanding of your mercies and your loving kindness and through the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit be drawn on closer to you. We pray that you will establish a firm and salvific relationship with us that we will never part from you but that we will abide with you for eternity, forever. Father, we lift up in prayer those among us, our loved ones who have been uh, ill, those who are sick, those who have been diagnosed with different illnesses, uh, who are on doctor's supervision, who are taking medication, who are undergoing therapy. In whatever form, we all need you. And so we pray, oh Lord God, you are the healer of mankind. You are the restorer of hope. You are the giver of salvation. Uh, the psalmist David says in Psalm 103 that you heal all our diseases and you forgive us from all our sins because you are the savior. So those names that have been presented on this platform this afternoon, this evening, you have heard the names uh, Dr. Payne, we pray for him. We lift him up to you in prayer for healing, for restoration, for vitality, for health, so that he could continue to minister on behalf of your people. Father, we pray for the loved ones of Pastor and Sister Barnaby uh, who are so willing to reach out and to uh, demonstrate their love for humanity the spending their resources, their time, their money, their energy. Please supply them, Father. Bless them. Pour upon them your richest grace and mercies, oh, Father, that they would have the energy, they would have the insight, the wisdom, they would have the continue to have the capacity to minister. Help them not to be discouraged because we know the enemy would throw all kinds of things at them, obstacles, trying to create hindrances, trying to make it difficult for them to minister, but please help them, O oh Father, to draw courage from the Lord Jesus Christ. May your divine strength, for you have said, all power is given unto you, both in heaven and on earth. So we pray for them, pray for the family, the children, minister to them, O oh God, the church family, the extended family, the neighbors, the friends, the loved ones, those who have, who have we have prayed for before, O oh Father, who are uh, on, on go, undergoing a medical treatment, each one of them, Remove all, all depression, the darkness of, and the clouds of despair and doubt. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke every power of demons and darkness, the powers of the enemy. You have defeated the enemy. And so we are standing on the victory that has been wrought through Jesus Christ. We claim his victory through his vicarious death on the cross. We pray that you will cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness and iniquity. And may we be clothed with the garments of your divine righteousness. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this evening uh, that you will encircle us uh, with your divine protection. Put a hedge around us. And uh, may the cloud of light continue to shine through every dark corner of our being, our existence. And may you keep us warm under the canopy of your divine protection through the Holy Spirit. Give us abiding uh, love for our fellow men that will continue to work for them and minister to them. Father, we pray for a breakthrough 
not only health, but financially. We pray for a breakthrough, oh Father, in our social interactions. We pray for a breakthrough, oh Lord God, in all of the different aspects of life and the challenges that we face. We thank you. Bless this platform. Bless this ministry. And may your name be glorified and may sinners be justified and saints be sanctified. In Jesus' name we pray.